Hey everybody, welcome to part 3 of how to water cool your system. I'm Jesse aka Captain Curry Sauce and with me I got my good friend Chris aka Mosquito. So Chris, or Mr. Mosquito, what are we talking about today? Well this kit didn't come with a drain valve which is kind of what this is, it's just a ball valve. I mean you can buy these separately and it makes things a lot easier when you're draining your loop. And although this kit didn't come with one, you can always buy one aftermarket, but at some point you're gonna have to drain your loop, whether it's maintenance, just you know getting rid of the old fluid and adding a new set or a new tank full of fluid, or if you wanna change components around or whatever you need to do to your loop. So you're gonna have to drain it at some point. So we're just gonna go over draining this loop and adding a couple of tips and tricks on things that we like to do. For this kit, one of the things that I know Chris and I have been both really love about Alpha Cool Radiators is the fact they have mul multiple ports on them. So that allows us to make, becomes, you know, draining becomes easy. So our plan for draining this loop is we are going to open this port all the way attach our bar with a little tiny hose on top of it or tube and then tilt the case over let it drain in this bucket right here and then once we do that we're gonna open this gently open this port a bit to let some air in or let the air move around because if there's no air coming in or out the water is not gonna flow as fast and it's gonna take us like two days to drain this loop so I don't think you guys want to see uh, well, maybe we should do that time lapse video of a loop draining. There you go. Oh. And the other thing too is that you might not have those ports available. Yes. In which case I've found it to usually be easiest then to go back out generally through the reservoir. Yes. Yep. And so for this one, since it has the, the bigger cap, it might just be easiest to remove that cap, probably loosen something else up again so you can get yep. the air in there. And then just either use a funnel to help contain a little bit or just hope you have a big enough bucket to not drench everything. But paper towels will probably be your friend for that route because that's probably gonna be a little bit bigger yes. mess than trying to use the, the radiator ports. But yeah, And if it helps, I know I have done it in the past, I'm pretty sure Chris has too, that I've taken my old bill to the kitchen sink and then just tipped it over into the sink. And if you're running a big ass tower, like, you know, those case labs or a full, like a 900D, feel free to drag it into the bathtub with you. I mean, there you go. You know, I built small things. I don't have to worry about that. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Couple things before you start training, computer turned off, let it go back down to normal operating temperature, you know, room temperatures, let it sit for a while. You don't want to just turn it off with it, you know, you run a, let's say you overclock two bejeebers and let the water hit really high temps and you just start draining. Now let it cool down a bit so all the thermal expansion and all that stuff can take place. So we are ready to open our first port, but just to be on the safe side, I will keep a paper towel a bit handy in case something happens because remember it's kind of pressurized in there so and you open it gently it's done oops and a drop of water fell you can see the water there water the life source you're ready to tip he's got his finger covering the end of the tube just to make sure that the water doesn't come out right away but not really an issue since we haven't opened anything else yet. So, so as you can see, there's probably enough water in the radiator to make water come out here, even though it's not upside down, but since we don't have any air in it yet. So I'm just gonna gently loosen it a bit. Keep my paper towel handy. Yep, see now you can see, now that he's letting some air into it, more water is coming out. tip it up a little bit more but with with this way you, you don't want to tip it too far because if you get it too far upside down you might end up getting water coming out of the one that we just opened so just be mindful of that I'll just 
just hold and let you control the angle because I can't see the. Can't see, I can't see the other uh, part. Let's keep going. I got my finger there, so. Now the water quit running out, but there's, there's still, still a lot of water left in left in the reservoir, and that's kind of where sometimes it's easier to drain from further down in the system, just so you don't have to try and get water to flow in awkward directions. But one thing I like to do when I'm trying to drain is kind of move it about, move your build around. So if you notice, all the water that's coming in was through this line got drained, I'll fill it again. Tip it over again. So there is a little bit of tipping and exercise involved. But we will talk, once we get our GPUs and we are going to place a proper drain port, so we'll talk about that too. Because there are ways to make this a lot easier. <laughs> doesn't have to be that hard, but I mean, it's really not that bad. It just takes a little bit more time than if you have a dedicated drain port. Because really, once you get enough of it drained, you can start taking components off as long as you're careful about which ones you use. So, I mean, obviously you wouldn't want to all of a sudden take this tube off if you haven't drained enough because obviously that's where a lot of the water will run to, but... We got the water drained, and if you notice, it's not like too much water. It's when it's still a lot of water, but but so we got everything drained out. I mean, there's still a little bit of water left, but we're not worried about that since we're not tipping it over anymore. All the ports are open; nothing should leak anymore. We disconnected the tubing from the water block and the radiator, and we also removed it from the back of our rest combo. This way, uh, what we're gonna do is, Chris and I are gonna take it to the next step, that is get our GPUs ready to be put in here. We gotta put two GPUs, one in here and one, sorry, one up here. So we're gonna use th three lanes to you put two GPUs, that way there's decent amount of space between them. Once that is done, we're gonna get <clears throat> our change, our radiator set up, so we will install since now we're adding GPUs to the loop and a single 240 is not enough for it, we're gonna add a, <clears throat> a slim 360 radiator in the roof and we're gonna relocate the 240 to the front. Uh, based on what case you have, you can choose where you want to mount your radiators. And I think we don't, we're not gonna spend too much time on radiator mounting anymore since we've talked about that in part one. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to go look at that video and let us know. But once we get the new radiators installed, the 360 in the top, 240 in the front, we are going to reroute the tubing a bit and we are going to properly add a drain port in our loop. That way you don't have to do this dance every time you want to either change something or drain your loop out because for whatever reason. Or just to do your maintenance because every now and then you do need to drain it just yes. kind of flush it out and then add new coolant, yes. coolant to it again but uh so yeah i mean that's the other thing too is once you start adding more radiators more gpus or more blocks in general it's just the more complicated the loop the more annoying it'll be to drain yes. without a drain port so yes we'll be definitely adding one of those so so now that our loop is empty, we can do whatever it is we need to do, whether it's maintain, add, change, rearrange, whatever. And so thanks for watching part three. And later on, we'll go over adding a drain to our loop, as well as adding a couple of other things like GPU blocks and another radiator.